It's Thursday, March 5th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and today we're going to answer some questions that you all have been posting about what's the update on the coronavirus, its impact on the airlines, and what are my chances of getting sick if I'm flying on an airliner aircraft? Let's check it out. The answer might surprise you. I've been home, off from flying since last April, working through this prostate cancer situation, which is I'm through with. I'm just waiting for the paperwork now. My numbers are good. <laughs> I haven't been sick once, being home this whole time. Whereas when I was working regularly, I would get colds rather frequently flying the airliners. But the thing I miss the most is is that nice little oil slick on top of my cup of airline coffee with the double bag strength <laughs> fresh from the water system from inside the airliner that's what i really missed most of all from my airline flying the home brewed coffee just isn't quite the same so today we'll do a quick review of how air is circulated inside the airliners what's the source of the air and what are some of the issues in airline flying that can make you sick Yesterday spent all day down at uh, McClellan Field, former McClellan Air Force Base, visiting the Aerial Firefighters Biannual Convention. I got a great bunch of interviews and content to share with you. I'll get to working on that over this weekend for all the latest on what's going on in the aerial firefighting business. Had a nice chat with Wayne Colson, owner and CEO of, of Colson Aviation, and he did a great, very moving memorial service for the crew members that were lost in the C-130 accident in Australia. There really are no new updates to that accident uh, other than what we've already learned in the um, preliminary reports to date. However, it does look like there was no lead plane pilot assigned to that flight. The C-130 was operating on their own. And tomorrow, Friday, I'm going to head up to Orville. I got an update to do with a elementary school up there, give them the Grand Orville tour, and I'll probably give you a live update from Orville tomorrow, Friday as well. So on to this coronavirus and what's going on with the airlines. There's no question about it. This current coronavirus scare, for lack of a better word, is affecting the airlines a lot. The Airlines are the first business to be impacted by any kind of global event. The airlines represents the, the uh, beginning of the discretionary spending cut out of anybody's budget. And as far as travel, traveling um, expenses go, the airline travel is the first thing to get cut. And especially if folks don't want to be traveling around during a outbreak like the coronavirus here. So as a result, some airlines, well, first off, we got uh, restrictions to places such as China and South Korea and Italy. So if your airline has a high exposure, a lot of routes to those areas, your schedule, your international schedule may be cut back as much as 20%. Some airlines domestic schedule is cutting back as much as 10%. How does that affect, affect the employees? Well, all the labor groups in the airlines are all union, under union, um, agreements and so the airlines have to work with these union agreements when these sort of things happen and for example uh, I think at United Airlines they're paying folks a reduced schedule a reduced salary to not fly at all for a month or to fly a very reduced schedule this is a great opportunity for pilots to go on what's called reserve where you just uh, instead of having a fixed schedule you go on reserve and wait for the phone to call and 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 respond to a flight via the phone call from scheduling <clears throat> that's a fixed uh, fixed salary of about 73 hours worth of flight pay per month depending on which airline you work for regardless of whether you fly or not if you fly more than 73 hours of course you get paid for that amount 
Another interesting impact are fuel prices are way down on the jet fuel. Of course, stock prices are down as well, and that's, that's the nature of the airline business. To you young pilots out there, welcome to the vagaries of the airline industry. Uh, we've got this huge pilot shortage going on right now. We've got over, hiring is going on at a rate at each major airline of about 1,000 pilots per year. That's about 80 pilots per month. They're, they're starting, got starting class dates. Breaking News United has just froze hiring. This this is kind of unprecedented. In the middle of this this large hiring boom, United is frozen hiring for now and canceled a couple of classes. This will probably just be a temporary measure until they get for probably a month or so until they get back on their feet with the hiring process. Why, I'm not exactly sure, but they have froze hiring. So for you young pilots out there, the vagaries of the airline industry mean that <laughs> Hiring will continue until the furloughs begin, and it is not uncommon for airlines to hire at a gangbuster rate and then suddenly just turn around, 180 degree turn, and begin furloughing pilots the next month. So you can just never tell. It's, it's, it's never a very stable industry in that respect. Seniority is everything. The more senior you are, the less susceptible you are to these ups and downs of the industry. Onto the aircraft themselves and traveling as a passenger. <clears throat> We've talked about this before. We might do a quick systems review of uh, the air system inside an airliner aircraft. The fuselage is pressurized with bleed air bled off of the compressor section of the engine. That air is hot as that air is compressed into the towards the back of the compressor section it heats up that air is then run through a couple of air cycle machines where the air is expanded over a turbine and dropped in temperature that air is also further cooled by a uh, radiator or exchanger that NACA duct you see on the bottom of the aircraft takes fresh air from outside the aircraft and blows it through a radiator further cooling the air it doesn't necessarily mix with the air that came from the bleed air from the engines. It just cools the air. That air is then eventually run through, well, it's run through a sock to remove the moisture out of it so that it doesn't freeze up the works. And then eventually that air is pumped into the fuselage. Inside the fuselage is a couple of recirculation fans that are controlled by the pilots up in the cockpit. Those recirculation fans are on all the time and that recirculates the air in the cabin and reduces the demand for bleed air from the engines to keep fresh air in the cockpit or in the cabin and cockpit that air is split between the the cabin and cockpit that recirculation of air allows the air to get recirculated through a couple of HEPA filters the high efficiency particulate air filter system on board the aircraft Regardless of that recirculation, the air is constantly changed out uh, every two to four minutes. The volume, the entire volume of air inside the cabin, cabin of an airliner is completely changed out with fresh air every two to four minutes. Not just recirculated, but completely changed out 15 to 30 times an hour or every two to four minutes. The HEPA filters on board an airliner are changed out approximately every month or so. Airliners, the maintenance schedule on airliners is done on a schedule. It's not like our the mighty Luscombe where I do an annual inspection once a year, do a big inspection and get a lot of work done on the airplane. Airliners got to keep, and this is an important thing about airliners and the impact on all this. Even though the airlines are reduced, reducing their flying schedule, it costs you more money to park an airplane than it does to keep it flying with passengers. An airliner is like a great white shark. It has to swim in order to stay alive. A shark has to swim in order to keep the, the water and oxygen flowing through its gills to stay alive. An airliner economically is very similar because your fixed costs of parking an airliner will just sink your entire operation. You've got to keep it moving with passengers on the aircraft and keep the cash flow going to keep this concern going. That's why you want to see aircraft utilization rates up and why you see such a quick turnaround time at airports 
in order to get those aircraft back into the air quickly, which brings us to the cleaning in between flights, which we'll get to in a minute. Okay, back to the HEPA filters. The recirculation of air through the cabin through the HEPA filters, the HEPA filters, which are changed out approximately once a month at maintenance intervals, are very efficient at, at capturing viruses and particulate matter. They claim to be 99% efficient as to capturing these viruses. So if the air is so clean inside the uh, airliners, where where are these germs coming from? Well, and why, why do we still get sick on an airliner? And part of the problem with the air on an airliner is that it is so dry. It's the humidity level of the air. The aircraft is flying at 30 to 35,000 feet. In that atmosphere, the humidity is down to 10 or 20 percent humidity. That air is further dried through the air conditioning system because the air conditioning system cannot handle moisture. It'll freeze up and the packs will shut down. So you got to keep the air dry. Now technology is advancing on this to add some humidity to the air. Um, the 787, by the way, doesn't use bleed air at all. It uses a completely different system, which gives you uh, uh, better pressurization and better humidity. And by the time that air pressurizes the cabin, if the aircraft's at 30,000 feet, the cabin altitude is about somewhere between six and eight thousand feet elevation. So you get this elevation change, you can feel it in your ear, ears and your sinuses, plus you've got this very dry air and it's the dry air that makes us more susceptible to catching colds on an airliner because this nice thick layer of mucus in our nose is one of the first defenses for catching germs as they come in contact with us and blowing them out of your nose. So since I've been grounded, I haven't gotten sick once. And when I was flying, I got sick rather frequently. And coupled with that, you are close quarters to other passengers. If the passenger sitting right next to you has got a dreadful cold and, and, and you're sitting next to him for so many hours, all the clean air in the world is not going to prevent you from potentially catching the cold of the passenger sitting right next to you. A more likely source for germs on board an airliner aircraft is uh, the surfaces themselves, the cleaning of the surfaces, the cleaning in between flights. Remember I said how quickly airliners need to turn in order to get that airplane back in the air and get it to earning revenue. The cleaners come on board as you're deplaning from the aircraft and begin that cleaning process, the cleaners are under an extreme amount of pressure to get that job done quickly and get that aircraft turned around. If you're there at the gate, you see how quickly the passengers come off before you start boarding the aircraft. And in between that time, the cleaners are doing a quick clean of the aircraft. And according to the airlines, that cleaning meets and exceeds all CDC Center of Disease Control requirements, but it's still nevertheless a very quick cleaning. If your plane goes to a international destination, it'll get a more, a much better cleaning, a more in-depth cleaning. They take more time. I found that uh, international flights just to Mexico resulted in some of the cleanest, some of the best cleaners in the industry. I remember right there in Mexico City. If your plane is parked overnight, it may get a even deeper cleaning. But it's not until once every 45 days does an airline get a really deep cleaning, detailed cleaning added to its maintenance schedule. So instead of just the air itself, it's probably more likely the germs on the surfaces, and apparently this virus can live for as many as 24 hours on a surface, that, that can transmit these germs and make you sick. So drink plenty of water and stay hydrated, even though the TSA took your water bottles back at security. Because you want to stay hydrated on these long airline flights, because it's the dehydration that is the big problem with making yourself susceptible to catching a cold. That plus jet lag, altitude changes, pressure changes, the stress of getting to the airport, the early wake-up calls, it all adds up. So I hope this gives you a little better understanding of the coronavirus and airline travel and some of the impacts on the airlines and some of the considerations to take as a passenger while flying. Thanks for watching. We'll have more soon. See you here.
That, by the way, is not a green screen. That's my backyard. <laughs> Some of you say, well, what is that, a green screen, screen in, your back, in your background there? Well, that's, that's the Blanco Lirio backyard right there, the South 40.